My name is Tom Cronnelly, and I am seeking the office of Chief Executive for Butte Silver Bowl. Um, as we all know, we can't gather in large groups right now, so I thought I'd put together a video of some of the things that uh, I wanted to address for the community and um, talk about retail in our community because that's one of the subjects that uh, I actually know a little bit about and I, I understand fairly well. So let me tell you a little bit about my background. I'm a Butte guy, went to Butte Central, graduated from Montana Tech. Um, when I was in college, I started working retail at Sears here in, on Dewey Boulevard. I was a janitor of all things. Uh, I ended up working them for a long time and ended up bouncing around other retailers. Um, in those jobs, I advanced to some fairly senior positions and had done a lot of business development, uh, both in retail and with manufacturers that were selling product to retail. So I kind of know a little bit about the retail market. Um, retail actually got me back to Montana. My last job, um, I managed 16 stores in four states for a retailer that uh, a lot of you already know who that is. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about the myths of, of the retail conditions in Butte. Um, I think we all know we want more retail choices, um, but I, I think I can explain it to you on why it is the way it is and what I would do to change that environment. So there's some myths. There's some myths that there's some people that are keeping retailers out of here. There's myths that if you send in a bunch of emails to their customer service department or uh, you f make phone calls to a retailer, that that's going to influence their decisions on whether or not they come to town. Um, that's not true. And, it, and some people think that the chief executive um, can pick up the phone and call a, a retailer and ask them to come. I can tell you from my own experience, I did site selection, I've looked at data, and retailers don't make emotional decisions. Most of the decisions they make are based off of um, four or five different data points, and then they, they can get much more detailed. So uh, the things that, that I looked at when I was doing retail uh, site selection, we looked at population, we looked at household income, we looked at growth rates, uh, growth is good, and we looked at poverty levels. Um, we were so analytical, I could tell you how many of a certain product was sold in a community and we could forecast how much business we could do just by analyzing the data. So anybody who tells you that they can pick up the phone or if uh, they should, you should write letters to a company, I'm telling you that's not going to change their decisions. But here's what they look at. They look at those four points and I want to talk about how Butte stacks up specifically against the neighboring communities, uh, Helen and Bozeman, because that's I think where a lot of Butte people go shop. Uh, they've got, both of those communities have pretty good retail um, choices. Um, but let's talk about the population. In Gallatin County, right now there's 111,000 people, and that's probably when school's not in session. When school's in session down there, there's probably another 20,000 people. Um, their growth rate, 24% annually. In fact, in uh, one of the data points I used in my previous job, Bozeman was one of the highest growing uh, cities in the country, or the highest growing as far as new home construction and population growth, that whole county. So Bozeman's exploding. I don't want to be Bozeman. But I think we'd like to have some of the uh, economic benefits of that size of population with more manufacturing. But they've got 111,000 people and they're growing crazy. Lewis and Clark County, everybody thinks Helena, because Helena City is only about 25,000 people. Lewis and Clark County, 68,000 people. So Lewis and Clark County has a much bigger population. They've got 8.9% growth. So where's Butte? Butte Silver Bow, sitting around 34,000 people. Our growth rate is 2.2%. So if I'm a retailer and I'm looking at that data specifically, uh, I want, if the growth was going, even if the population wasn't there, I'd be pretty optimistic that we'd get there. But when the growth rate is pretty flat, it's not a market that retailers are going to be jumping all over. The second thing is income. And this is average household income. Um, Gallatin County is at 59,000 average household income. Helena is actually higher at a little over 60,000. And Butte, we're sitting right around 40,000 average household income. That's, that's a number that scares me. Um, and something we have to fix. Uh, the, the next two are really about um, poverty rates. In the world of, uh, there's two ways to look at this. Households with kids in school, that poverty number for Butte is 19.45%. Uh, Almost one in five households in Butte with kids in school are living in poverty. That's by the federal de definition of poverty. In, to compare, that number in Bozeman's only 6.8%, and in Helena it's 102 So we've got a problem with uh, 
great percentage of our population living in the poverty, uh, living the below poverty. When you look at overall population, poverty in Butte's at 16.3, Bozeman's 9.8, and Helena's 8.3. Well, why is that? Um, I've looked at this. This is a little bit dated. It's a couple years old, but this is the type of uh, jobs in Butte in what sector they are in. Our largest sector is healthcare and social services. So that's not just hospitals. That's all the service providers and mental health, dentist office, anybody that's in healthcare and social services, we've got nearly 3,000 jobs. And again, this is a couple years old, but it's still the point is really the, the percentages here. Government is the second largest employer in town, followed by retail, accommodations, uh, that's hotels and food services, so um, my business is in this food section, section here. But let's think if we took those two and stacked them together, retail, restaurants, bars, hotels, it would be a graph off the chart. It would be the biggest segment of our economy. And right now with the uh, uh, coronavirus, this thing is a big deal because it's the biggest sector of our economy. There are more people employed in those two categories that are not working right now than any other category. Um, on, the, on the right side here, we have professional technical services, manufacturing, and construction. So that's, that's about 500 jobs. I know manufacturing is a little bit better than this now, and construction is about 500 jobs. So why is this important? Let me show you the different. The next slide is how much do those jobs pay? So. Our two biggest categories, um, retail, restaurant, and accommodations, are the two smallest categories. So our biggest employers are the lowest paying employers. But look at this. Our biggest employer, or our biggest wages in town are in manufacturing. And once, uh, once again, go back to the previous slide, manufacturing is the second smallest sector in our, uh, in our economy. So when I went to Central, and went to Montana Tech, I learned a little bit about math. And the way the math works, you're not gonna improve your economic conditions and you're not gonna raise your average income unless you raise manufacturing jobs. It is the key. And everybody that's in county government knows it. Everybody at the uh, Butte Local Development Corporation knows it. And everybody talks about it because they know it is the biggest thing that we can do to improve our economy. So I wanna share with you my plan because I, I have a specific direction that I want to go as it relates to economic development. If we want manufacturing jobs, we got two ways to do it. One is to hope they come here, and the other one is to do something about it, to entice them, and I'm not talking financially, but to go out and, and sell them on the benefits of moving back to Montana. Um, hope is not a good plan. Everybody hopes it's going to get better. We need tactics that are going to get it better. So here's what I want to do, and I'm sharing this because I don't care if anybody else running for chief executive plagiarizes this idea, because I know that I'm the one who can do it. My background and my experience in business development and managing sales organizations is a much different perspective than anybody else that's seeking this office. So my resume, um, you can steal my ideas, but you can't steal my resume. Um, so let's talk about a couple things related to this. So, Butte, Butte Local Development Corporation has been designated as the economic driving force for our community. When that was created in 1985, the BLDC was given $45,000 from county government for the purpose of, of growing our economic base. Today, I don't even know how many years later that is, 35 years later, they're still getting the same dollar amount. So one of the things I would do is somehow in our budget, we gotta find a way to make the BLDC whole. If just in inflation, they should be getting $98,000 versus the $45,000 they're getting from the county government. If in fact they are going to be our economic driving engine. That's just kind of a cost of entry. The real thing I want to do is I want to recruit. And um, I've done it before in other jobs. I've created products, or I've worked with companies that had products with no market. And we took our product and we prospected, we made contacts with prospective buyers, and we went out there and we sold our product into retail and other uh, uh, industries. I know the concepts of building a pipeline and prospecting and leading a sales organization to success. So here's what I will do. I would have a dedicated person on payroll, either working for the BLDC that's funded by the county or working at local county government that's accountable to doing things that are gonna uh, recruit businesses, specifically manufacturing businesses. 
Right now, if you look at that $40,000 poverty number I was talking about, divide that up by $4,000 a year per household. Let's say two full-timers living at home. That's $10 an hour. Manufacturing jobs that are paying $17, $18, $19, $20 an hour is what we need. We don't need more of these. We actually need these people to be making more money. And the way that's going to happen is having more jobs in this sector. That's going to force those people to follow, the, follow where the jobs are. And to be honest, as a restaurateur, on the bottom end of that scale, I'm probably going to have to pay more than 10 bucks an hour to attract because it's a, there's only so many people working. So we could have an economic shift in our economy if we can get an economic shift in, in, and get more manufacturing as a percentage of our economy. So I look at Montana Tech. Uh, the Montana Tech Foundation has done a fantastic job in getting people around the country that have connections to Butte, connections to Montana, or connections to Montana Tech to help them do the things that they've done on campus. Their last campaign, I think it was over $41 million that they were able to raise. And it's from people all over the country who have connections to the campus. I lived out of town, and I know a lot of people around the country were in similar situations to me. Had to leave town because there were no jobs. Well, a lot of those people are all over and they've had a pretty successful careers too. And there are senior levels of companies that have the ability to make decisions on their growth. Um, some examples that are local. Seacast, when it first moved back to Montana, was because of Butte guys that were out in Seattle that wanted to expand and they brought their company back to Montana. REC Silicon, why are they here? Same, same scenario, Butte guy brought their company back. There are people all over. So my plan would be that this dedicated resource, don't know what the title would be, this person is gonna identify who is who that would love to get back to Montana. We're gonna work with the BLDC to help market that, but they're gonna be accountable to a number of contacts, uh, presentations, and jobs that they can bring in. And if anybody's got a better idea, I want to hear it, but that's my plan, and I know that I can manage it because I've done it before. So um, if, we, if we look at that fix, let, and when I say fix, I'm talking growth. We, we can't wave a magic wand. If it was easily fixed, it would have already been fixed. But let's talk about some of the other issues that we're dealing with as a community. Um, I think um, our, our crime rates are somewhat influenced by the economic conditions. I think our substance, substance abuse issues are, are somewhat impacted by our economy. Uh, suicide, which I think is a, uh, a huge issue for our, our community. There's got to be an economic element to that. And, and dare I even say potholes. Everybody talks about potholes. Well, I'll give you my opinion on that. If you think the folks in public works are tired of hearing about it, or if you think that they, 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 if they had a way to do it, or if they had the resources to do it, they would do it. It's not an issue of will, it's an issue of resources. And as a taxpayer, I don't want to pay more taxes, but boy, if we had some growth and had some people moving here, we had more people paying taxes and more businesses paying taxes, spreading it out, we would have more resources to address things like the potholes. And I bring that up because I, I look at comments online and it's very emotional. Why don't they fix the potholes? Well, they can't, they don't have the resources. The only way we're going to do that is if we shift our economy from a, a it's probably a third of the jobs are related to the lowest paying jobs in, in, the, in the county. If we could shift that to a, a, a more diverse economy focused on manufacturing, and I know people in uh, other cities that would love to help us. And the Montana Ambassadors is a good example. There's a group out in Seattle. They meet once a month and they're all Montana guys trying to figure out what they can do to help us out. And I would have contacts with those. I would be proactively recruiting. I would help them fix their problems. Big cities, traffic problems, their, their wages are out of control. They don't want to be in there. And I think that we could really sell the idea of moving back to Montana. Um, so that's kind of what I want to do. I really want to be specific. Um, I want to grow the manufacturing sector, and I think that fixes about half a dozen things in our community and gets us on the right track. And guess what one of them is? When you have growth and you have a higher average income, you're going to attract those retail companies that you want. So if anybody has any questions, you can reach out to me uh, via uh, email at tomcronley at gmail.com, two N's, two L's, 
And uh, I'm easy to find on the Facebook. Uh, but give me a call. Let's talk. But let's, let's fix this economy. Uh, put me in there, and I will work hard for you. You have the easy part. All you have to do is hire me, and I'll do all the work. Thanks, and have a great day.